Thank you very much. Um, let me dive right in. So think about selling an object in, in an auction. In many scenarios, bidders might not precisely know how much they like the object for sale. But what they can do before the start of the auction is they can learn. And you might think about this learning having two dimensions. On the one hand, you might think about, well, how much information should bidders acquire before the start of the auction? On the other hand, you might also think about which aspect, which component of the object for sale would bidders want to learn about. And this is what I'm going to focus on today. In particular, I'm going to ask the question whether bidders want to learn about a private component, something that matters only for them, or a common component, something that every bidder shares. Okay, let me give you an example. Think about an oil tract, an oil field for sale. There is just a certain amount of oil on site, irrespective of who gets the property rights to the oil field, they are going to have uh, the same amount of oil on site. This is the common component. On the other hand, bidders might be different with respect to their drilling costs or the ability to extract the resource from the field. So what if there's too much information out there to process it all and they have to make a stance? Would they want to perform an exploratory drilling focus on figuring out how much oil there is a common component, or rather focus on their individual drilling costs or their ability to extract the resource, something private to them. No? Let me give you another example. Uh, think about a firm that is for sale. The firm just has some assets, some book values. No matter who acquires the firm will get this um, book value, the common component. But firms might be different in their overlap in research and development, some kind of synergies that they have with the firm for sale, a private component. So what if in order to do diligence, there's just too much information out there to process it all, and they have to make a decision what to focus on? Would they want to focus on the common component or the private component, like their individual synergies? And you can see here how the value of learning about one or the other is going to depend on what my opponent does, what the other bidder is going to do, as well as on the choice of the auction format, on the mechanism with which this object is sold. Okay. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the information here. If my opponent and I, if we both drill for oil, figure out how much oil there is, we are basically analyzing the same underlying fundamental. So our private information before the auction is going to be correlated. On the other hand, if I'm focused a bit on something that matters only to me, I'm going to get a more independent signal. So the degree of correlation in private information is going to be endogenously determined by what bidders learn about. And as a consequence of this, the winner's curse, the degree of the winner's curse is going to be endogenously determined. If my opponent learns his private component, then from winning against him, I learn nothing new. But if he drilled for oil, this is relevant information for me. And then there is the winner's curse. So let's think about this from the perspective of efficiency. From the perspective of efficiency, the object should go to the person who values it the most. Who is that? Well, the person with the highest private component because they both, every bidder shares the same common component. So from the perspective of efficiency, Bidders should not waste their resource learning about something that is irrelevant for the efficient allocation decision. They should rather focus on their private components, something that would be relevant for efficiency. From the perspective of the bidders, though, that's not necessarily clear that this is what they want to do. By learning about something that the other person learns about, bidders can have correlation and private information, coordinate their strategy depending on the auction mechanism and somehow maybe protect themselves against the winner's curse. So there's a possible tension here between efficient learning, namely about the private component, something that matters only to the bidder itself, and individual incentives, which is not yet clear exactly in which direction it goes and might depend on the auction format. And this is what we're interested in today. All right, let me give you a preview of the results. Um, let's assume that learning uh, basically about both components is equally informative. I'm being vague here. What I want to say is that I don't want a bidder to choose learning one or the other just because the information is so much better than about the other component. Let's assume that no matter what you learn about, overall, it's more or less the same informativeness to you. And I'm going to be more precise later on. Then in second price auction, bidders are only going to learn about their private component. There's not going to be 
any correlation. Bidders will choose the least degree of correlation available to them. And this is good news for the second price auction, which will be the ex-ante efficient auction format. I won't have time today to talk about the first price auctions, but there in the paper, you can see how the effect there goes a little bit in the other direction. So there's the force pushing others towards learning about the common component, pushing them towards more correlation. And in the paper, I show that no robust equilibrium is going to be efficient. All right. Before I go into details of the model, let me give you a little bit of general intuition. Do the following experiment of mine. This is a trick that I'm going to be exploiting in the paper. Let's assume that both bidders follow some symmetric bidding function. The higher the signal, the higher they bid. What is the effect of more or less relation on their expected payment? In the second price auction, what do you pay conditional on winning? Well, you pay the second lowest bid, right? So in the second, under perfect correlation, if both bidders are using the same bidding function, conditional on me winning, I pay the bid of the other person. And the perfect correlation, this is precisely my bid. The lower the correlation, the more independent the bids become, the lower my payment conditional on winning. What I'm describing here to you is that conditional on winning, you're paying the second order statistic of the bids. The lower the correlation, the lower a second order statistic of the bids. This is an effect that I'm going to exploit uh, in, this, in the construction of equilibrium. In the first price auction, what do you bid, uh, uh, pay conditional on winning? Well, you pay the first order statistic of the bids. The lower the correlation, the lower the first order statistic of the bids. All right, so this has nothing yet to do with the winner's curse or any expected gain, and this is something that I'm going to show you in more detail in the model. Let me dive. So we have one object for sale and there is no reserve price. There are two risk neutral bidders indexed by I and each bidder has a two dimensional type. Each bidder has a common component that is the same for both bidders and a private component TI that is individual. So all the components are drawn IID from the uniform distribution on zero one. In the paper, I allow for more general utility functions. For today, let's keep it simple. The total value of the object is simply the sum of the common component plus the private component. For so today, literally uh, just any value between zero and two. All right, that's the setup. Um, common component S and the two private components T1, T2. Now, one slide abstractly about the information. All the components are initially unknown to all bidders. And bidders face a learning decision. Bidders are going to observe a one-dimensional signal, xi, that is between zero and one. What is going to be fixed is the information about the total value of the object. It's not about which posterior you, the posterior is going to be fixed of the total value. What is going to be endogenous here is where, whether this update is about the common or the private component or some combination of the two. And the goal of doing this like this is to isolate the strategic effect of information choice, not have a bidder choose one experiment over the other because it's precise. Let me be more specific about this. A bidder can, in our oil field example, perform an exploratory drilling about how much oil there is. There's this experiment out there, XI superscript S, that has some PDF that is informative about the common component. There is another experiment out there learning only about the private type has another density function under PDF that is also informative about the private component. Bidders cannot perform both experiments. They have to decide which of the two to observe. And this is the information choice here. This is one variable, rho i, that is going to govern the choice of which experiment to observe. So if bidders choose rho i equal to zero, that means they only learn about their private component. This is the only experiment realization that they're observing. If bidders choose row i equal to one, they only learn about the realization of the experiment about the common component. So for today, the choice is either or. In the paper, I can allow for more general truth or noise technology so that one signal has information about both components, but in a convex combination such that Overall, I'm not changing the distribution of the posterior. All right. So uh, a little bit more about the correlation structure here. If the two experiments for two bidders are correlated, I want them to be correlated only through the common component 
only through how much oil there is. So signals are correlated, but conditional dependent on the realization of S, of the common component. So a value frameworks that I can nest here are the IPV setup. If both bidders only look at their private component, the information is going to be independent and they know nothing about the common component. So this is essentially an IPV setup. If bidders both learn only about the common component, only about how much oil there is, this is the classical pure common value case, right? The information of one bidder matters equally for him as it does for the other person. And then you could think about more general interdependent value framework for interior information choices. All right. And this is an endogenous decision as a function of the information choice. Um, we already talked about that uh, give, both experiments give the same posterior distribution. Just one additional assumption that I need is a monotone likelihood ratio property, which basically says high states go together with high signals, low states go together with low signals. So a strong positive correlation motion. Okay. Let me briefly go over the timing. Uh, the auction format is announced, all the components are drawn, and then bidders decide without observing their components uh, what to learn about. Their information choice, row one and row two. And they are going to observe the realizations of their experiments thereafter, and the auction takes place. Two things that are crucial about the way that I set up the model. First, there's a commitment to a mechanism, to an auction format, and only then information choice, because that's what I'm after. Which auction induces learning about which aspects? And information choice is covered in the sense that a bidder has to choose what to learn about and how to bid without knowing what the other person learned about. So deviations of the equilibrium um, in information choice are not going to be observable. All right, this is the time. Uh, due to time constraints, let me skip most of the literature and just mention that I'm building on the interdependent value framework from Milgram and Weber for their seminal work from um, 82. People have been asking the question of uh, how people learn in auction environments for uh, so many papers, for example, the paper from Persico, which is probably the closest to mine. Um, the difference is that most of those papers ask the question of how much information about a given component um, people acquire, bidders acquire, and how much in the sense of Blackwell sufficiency or accuracy or effectiveness from Lehman. On the other hand, I'm not fixing a value paradigm like IPV or interdependent values, and rather it's not about how much information, but about which aspect we just learn about that I'm, uh, where I differ from the literature. All right. Now let's discuss the second price auction in the remaining tab I have. So this is a standard second price auction uh, with no reserve price uh, um, and equal typing rules, so everything is standard. The class of equilibria that I'm after, that I'm admitting, is pure strategy based Nash. I want bidders to choose a symmetric information choice strategy, and I want bidders to use symmetric pure increasing bidding functions that I'm denoting by beta, two for second price auction. All right. The main theorem for the second price auction is that in any equilibrium, information choice is unique. Bidders will learn only about their private components, and such an equilibrium, in fact, does exist. This is good news for the second price auction. We get an ex-ante-efficient outcome, right? Bidders are not wasting their resources on a component that does not matter for the efficient allocation decision. There are two aspects here. There's the existence that is more or less straightforward and the uniqueness that I'm going to exploit next. next. Just one sentence about the, uh, the existence. If my opponent learns about his private, uh, private type, no matter what my information choice is going to be, I'm going to get independent information from my opponent. There's nothing about correlation that I can do because he learned about something that matters only to him. And no matter what I learn about, I get the same overall information. So it's pay of relevant what I learn about. What is more relevant is why there cannot be any other equilibrium in which there is some kind of degree of winner's curse or why we cannot have any degree of correlation in equilibrium. And this is what I'm going to discuss in the remaining time that I have. So why can't it be that both bidders figure to the drill for oil, want to figure out how much oil there is, learn only about the common component? What goes on in an argument like this? Let's try to prove it by contradiction. Let's assume it would be an equilibrium in which both bidders drill for oil. Then uh, the following deviation strategy is going to do the job. Instead of learning about S, about the common component, 
let the bidder deviate and learn only about his private component TI. But for tractability, use the same bidding function as before. This deviation strategy is going to have the same expected gain, so we keep the winner's curse exactly the way it was, nothing changes there, but it explores the strictly lower expected payment through the argument of the second order statistic that I mentioned in the beginning. Let me give you a little bit more details. Let's look at what happens to the winning probability if we fix the value of the object to be 0.8 just some um, 0.8. Here on the x-axis, we have the common component. On the y-axis, we plot winning probability. So just to give you an example how to read this figure, here um, I'm plotting the common component is equal to 0.1. So in order for total value to sum up to 0.8, the private component needs to be 0.7. That's just how you read the figure. This is all the combinations that lead to a value of 0.8. Now, in the candidate equilibrium, both bidders are drilling for oil. Both have access to the same information technology, so they're looking, analyzing the same thing. Therefore, irrespective of the realization of how much oil there is, they always have a winning probability of one half. Now, in our deviation strategy, a bidder got rid of correlation. Now, for example, at this point here, a bidder learns about a super high private component realization of 0.7, while well, his opponent learns about a low amount of oil there is. So a bidder here gains winning probability by the deviation. On the other hand, whenever the private component is lower than the common component, a bidder loses winning probability. So you can see here by our deviation strategy, by changing the correlation structure, we shift the event of winning probability into different states than they were before. However, overall, this effect cancels out. Why does it cancel out? Well, because we constructed the world in such a way that we did not change overall inform informativeness. So basically the marginal distribution of signals. This slide uh, basically says that fix a value. There are different combinations that can lead to such a value. And overall, for every pointwise value, winning probability does not change. But because for every value you're winning with the same probability, your expected gain is the same with this deviation strategy and therefore also the winning probability. So this argument just said, if we play our deviation strategy, nothing happens on the expected gain part. What about the expected payment conditional on winning? Conditional on winning, a bidder pays the second order statistic of bids, right? And this is the simplest argument for two bidders to show that with the deviation strategy, this is how the second order statistic looks like. With the candidate equilibrium, this is how it looks like. You can see here how you can apply Cauchy-Schwarz and immediately see that one dominates the other in the first order stochastic dominant sense. With other words, that's the argument that the lower the correlation, the lower the second order statistic of bids, the lower your expected payment conditional on winning. And so this just basically killed our deviation strategy, uh, not deviation strategy, sorry, candidate equilibrium. There's a way, whenever there is correlation, to decrease correlation, learn about something else, but find a bidding strategy such that you keep the winner's curse exactly what it is, get the same expected gain from deviating, but through lower correlation, have to pay strictly less. And this argument not only holds for this extreme information choice, but also for any intermediary correlation that I'm allowing in the model. And so therefore, when there is any degree of correlation in a candidate equilibrium, this candidate equilibrium can be broken. In the remaining seconds that I have, let me just sum up. The question was, if there's too much to learn about, what would bidders want to learn about, common or private component? And the answer in the second price auction was that, bidders only learn about their private component in any symmetric equilibrium and we get IPB endogenously. There are more results in the paper about other auction formats, first person some about the OP auction. Um, let me end on a more general note. I think the question of information choice is a general, is an interesting one in a variety of setups. So you might think in a strategic environment, for example, of voting, optimal mechanisms, public goods and so forth, that if there's more than one thing to learn about, it becomes a strategic decision based on the mechanism what to learn about. And I'll be happy to talk about this more later on. Thank you very much.